Today's lesson is called Characteristics of Life. Our objectives for this lesson will be, number one, what is life? Number two, how can you know the difference between living and non-living things? And number three, what are the characteristics for life? The five characteristics of life will be explained first. In order for something to be considered a living organism, they must show certain characteristics. These are the five basic characteristics that scientists agree upon that would be considered characteristics of life. Number one, we have growth. Organisms that are living organisms must be able to grow. Also, number two, they must be able to reproduce their own kind. Number three, they must be able to adapt and evolve uh, and respond to stimuli within their environment. And number three, they must be made of cells. Cells are the basic unit for life. And finally, they must be able to use energy. One tip to remember the five characteristics of life would be GRACE, G-R-A-C-E. G stands for grow, R, reproduce, A, adapt, C, cells, and E, energy. Let's first talk about growing or growth and development of an organism. Living organisms, in general, get larger in size as they grow and develop. This is because living organisms are made of cells. When cells divide, you get more cells, and when they increase in number, that allows those organisms to get bigger. Also, when cells divide, they can build and repair new cells and replace old cells. If a cell gets injured or needs repaired, uh, the cells will divide and replace those cells. If there is an organism that may be a one-celled organism, it still will be able to grow and divide. Uh, it will still be able to grow and divide, and when it divides, it's going to make another of the same type of cell, a one-celled organism. Lifespan is the term we use to describe the length of time an organism is expected to live. Reproduction. Organisms need to be able to make their own kind by passing genetic information from parents to offspring. Uh, organisms must be able to reproduce because they want to be able to uh, have their species to continue to survive over time um, and not become extinct. So they also need to be able to replace those organisms that have died um, in order for the, spe the species to continue. Adaptations are just changes that have occurred in a species. And these changes also help the organism to survive. Organisms respond to certain stimuli around them in their environment and certain stimuli that are inside of them. For example, birds will migrate to the south when they are in the northern areas or northern hemisphere and uh, the temperature changes. Also, this plant is a Venus flytrap, and it responds to movement on uh, its outer structures because when it feels or when it senses that there's movement, there's possibility that it's an insect that it can eat, and that insect helps it to survive. Uh, also, organisms can respond to light. For example, plants uh, will definitely need sunlight in order to survive. 
So uh, they are going to respond to that by opening up certain structures in their leaves to capture that sunlight because that sunlight helps them to make food. Also, animals uh, such as humans um, may feel hunger or thirst and that is a stimuli inside of our bodies that tells us that we need to eat or drink. So uh, stimuli is just something that causes a reaction to occur in a living thing. For example, a reflex or um, an automatic response such as when maybe you place your hand on a hot stove and without thinking, you pull it back. That would be the reaction to the stimuli of heat. Um, also, organisms must be able to maintain what we call homeostasis. And this is an organism's ability to maintain proper conditions inside of its body, no matter what the outside conditions may be. So for example, humans, in order to survive, must maintain a certain body temperature around 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit. Well, humans may go to a cold environment and that would be considered a stimuli, which causes a reaction. And your reaction may be to shiver, or your muscles start to quake and shiver, because that is what's going to increase your body temperature so that it can maintain its 98.6 degrees. Another example would be when a human would be in a hot environment. and your body begins to sweat. That sweat is going to cool your body down in a hot environment to again maintain that 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit. This would be an example of homeostasis. Over time, organisms change to better adapt to their environment for survival. Again, survival includes being able to adapt and respond, but also it's necessary uh, for the organisms to be able to, for example, find a mate in order to reproduce, also be able to get food, find and get food, and also avoid predators so that they do not become extinct.